morning. Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Uh, is it live? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, oh, it's not. Hang on. Oh, it's setting up your meeting. Yes. There it's it is. live. Yay. <laughs> wow. You know, I love to watch back our lives to see how we start because it's it doesn't matter how many times we do this. It's always the same. We're always faffing about. We're always surprised that it worked. Like when my, <laughs> my grandma answered the phone. It's so <laughs> like, like she's surprised that someone answered the phone, even though she rang. <laughs> and that's what I think of whenever we do lives. Because oh, I'm always very awkward. So, hi, how are you? Lainey and I are talking about partnering with our children. And uh, the biggest thing that comes up for parents even if they don't use this word or know what the feeling is uh is triggers yeah. and what we mean when we use that word I mean maybe people feel like it's a bit overused but it's still quite a good word because it's almost like um a button is pushed that sets off these sort of feelings of your nervous system completely like imploding or exploding. So the word trigger seems like appropriate. And it's what happens when our kids really give us the shits. You get triggered. Like they, um, I'm just thinking of some of the things that even trigger me now. Um, one of my kids, I won't say which one, uh, anyone who knows me will probably know. Um, this morning he was waiting for a game to be released. He got his time zones mixed up and it was 8 a.m. in Canada, not 8 a.m. in England. And he, all of the past week's frustration came out because of this game. And he was, he goes into blame mode when something happens. And that is triggering to me. Uh, and I know this and I have to do a lot of work, even though this is not a new idea for me. He, it was his older sister's fault. It was his younger sister's fault. It was mainly his brother's fault. Um, it was his friend's fault who's staying with us. Um, he didn't blame his parents, so it win. Um, it was not his fault at all, even though the reason he was actually really angry is because he's not been getting enough sleep. And he couldn't see how that, that was because of choices that he's been making. It was everybody else's fault for influencing him, <laughs> which is actually very funny if you know my children, <laughs> the idea that they'd be influenced by anyone outside of themselves um, outwardly to me is quite ridiculous. And that was really triggering to me. And then I had to do some work on the fly <laughs> while I was holding space for his big feelings um, to keep myself in check because what do you do when you're triggered? You react. Yes, yes, yes. Well, here's the thing, right? We think that or we react to behavior, right? Because that's the thing that touches on, on our sort of unhealed spots inside of ourselves. And we always kind of hyper focus in on what they're doing or what they're saying or how they're reacting and it is making you feel some way or another right and this is always you know in the moment it's a nervous system reaction we feel it physically we can feel it building up we could feel like our our heartbeat starting to get faster right we could feel the anger rising we could feel some of us the the sort of like heat in our throat and it's it's really up to each one of us to identify what is happening as we are getting triggered right but it's always a reaction inside of us based on something that they are doing or something that's happening in the moment and a lot of times we tend to think that it's their behavior, right? Is it their oh, behavior? It's really, yeah, it would be. I mean, it feels easier to us as a parent who's working really, really hard to meet our child's needs because all parents are doing that. Like there's no, I've never met a parent who doesn't love their children and want to do a good job. We are all trying to do that. So when these things happen that outwardly look like what we're doing is not working because the kid's, doing the thing or not doing the thing um then we want to believe that it's actually their behavior that's the problem for sure it's the kids it's the kids it's their behavior it's that thing that they did it's how they said it it's it's their actions 
and all the focus is out of you onto them, right? <laughs> Oy. So yeah. what was, let me ask you while this was happening, what was happening in your body? Did you like start getting, you know, move into fight, flight, or freeze? Were you ready to like, argh, like? Oh, like, yeah. I mean, that that's what it feels like because I don't do that outwardly, but that's what it feels like. Um, and yeah, it almost feels like, yeah, an attack, I guess. Like what? they're doing that to me. He's making me feel, um, oh my God, who has, said, who ha has not said that? They're making me feel dot, dot, dot. Oh yeah. my God. They make me feel unimportant. They're making me feel uh, angry. They're making me feel <laughs> like I'm going to wring their neck. They're making me feel like I just need to cry. They're making me feel overwhelmed. Like, oh my God. If you are watching this live or if you're watching this uh, in replay, write in the comments what your kids make you feel when you are starting to get triggered. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I mean, mostly I think, um, Sorry, someone. There is a comment, I think, but I can't actually see it. Um, it's Amanda. She says hi. I just oh. picked it up off my phone. Hi, Amanda. Uh, <laughs> I, I think most of the time, actually, uh, parents just want it to stop. They sure. want the behaviour to stop, and that's when we tend to go into control. Maybe we go into a very obvious punishment. If you don't stop doing that thing right now, I'm going to fill in the blank. Uh, take something away, reduce your screen time. Uh, we weren't allowed to have dessert if we were naughty or we got smacked or we got sent to our room. Uh, I've heard of kids uh, who weren't allowed, they, they're not allowed to go to the park. They thought they were going to go to the park, can't go to the park. Um, they were supposed to go to a birthday party, aren't allowed to go to the birthday party, um, all sorts of things. Well, parents get really desperate. They get really, really desperate because they want the feeling in their nervous system to stop. They want peace. <laughs> And they think, yeah, they think the only way to get peace is to um, stop the child doing the thing that they're doing that's bugging them. You know what I got when I triggered my mother when I was a kid? I got silent treatment. Yeah, so, or silent treatment. Yeah, That was like the biggest punishment because yeah. I was virtually made invisible. Yeah. Um, there's a great comment from Amanda. Yes, Amanda, I've learned I'm still learning and no one can make me feel anything. A little bit of self-responsibility for my feelings. And we're going to talk about that. But here's the thing. When you're dysregulated, when you are triggered, regardless of the why, it's not the time to take responsibility for that it's not the time to process that it's not the time for you know here's my feelings and I'm responsible for it we need to practice this shit before that happens and after it happens when we are dysregulated our job is to regulate our nervous system our job is to remove ourselves so we don't react in a way that then we have to heal and repair all that connection from right because you're not going to make it stop and heal the situation and, and gain greater connection and really come to a place where where you're understanding one another in the moment, not while you're both dysregulated, not while you're both triggered. And I, I guess I mean triggered and dysregulated are pretty much the same thing, right? So, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, so while we're triggered, we're not going to solve the problem. It's just not going to happen. You could scare them and scream and make them stop and, well, that really- And that might work. It, it might. I mean, this is the, this is the trick, I think. Um, which is very interesting about um, any kind of parenting that makes us believe that trying to change our child's behaviour by really subtle forms of manipulation and coercion or by punishment, all of which are, are punitive and designed to control another person, um, that we're tricked into thinking that they work but because they do work actually like if you're an yeah result that we can see and you, you might you might get an instant result yeah you might um and 
Uh, So then you might think, oh, that works. This is an effective strategy. Um, Punishing my child works, so I'm going to keep doing it. And it does work potentially to stop the behaviour. But it doesn't work if actually your goal is not to stop the behaviour but connection and partnering with your child for for the long term. Right. And and really that's what what Lainey and I are talking about. Yeah, we're talking about... um, Sorry, my camera's gone really fuzzy, or is it my eyes? We're good. We're I've got good. really bad hay fever, and I feel like there's this haze over my screen that wasn't oh. there before. But you look gorgeous. <laughs> I can see you clearly, finally, oh with my that God. new new camera. But you're right, and I think a lot of times, Sarah, people don't understand. Parents don't understand that short term coercion of behavior modification or changing what's happening in that moment that's really a tremendous disservice to your parenting connection and it can 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 damage your not only relationship but it can create traumatic beliefs in our child that they're gonna have to heal right like hello I had a lot of shit that I had to look at because silent treatment, getting yelled at, then followed up by silent treatment, gave me a story about who I am and the value that I have as a human being. And regardless of whether or not I was triggering my mother, I was a child. And her response to the things that I was doing was not appropriate. For, it doesn't give because I was a child and she was a parent didn't give her the right to create traumatic beliefs inside of me and the majority of the belief systems that we hold are derived from our childhood in a, during a time where we're developing during a time where we're making sense of the world right and it's it's really the accountability of the parent to understand if you want to raise a healthy human being eventually into adulthood you've got to be a healthy human being as an adult and as a parent and reacting from a place of dysregulation can really damage the person that you love the most crazy right yeah yeah and you know what we're really talking about is like generational programming generational trauma because of course in most of us and I was no different when I became a parent there were lots of things I knew I wanted to do different there were some very obvious big things that I remembered from my childhood that I knew I wanted to do different one of them was smacking I knew I wasn't going to be violent physically violent and another one was I was never going to just tell my kids no or make these decisions without having a conversation or giving an explanation one of the things that both my parents did was live in live in the um because I told you so because I said so because I'm the mum world and that was endlessly frustrating to me as a child because I didn't understand why some of the decisions were being made and I felt really undermined and even ashamed of asking for things and then getting the no because I said so and so they they were like the big things right and I think many parents of you know, my generation, your generation, our generation, you know, have made those big changes, you know, like attachment parenting, for example, has become, that's a very ancient way of parenting, but it's really come back into um, awareness. And they're very obvious things, but some of those more subtle controls are so, so under the radar that we perhaps don't remember them as children. And then don't realize that we're repeating patterns until our children either hold us accountable because they say no (laughs) no we're not (laughs) doing that or um they trigger you with with your with their behavior and that's what happened for me like I knew I didn't want to be quite like my parents but I actually didn't realize the extent to which I was controlled um and the extent to which really my personality had probably been like a little bit smushed to keep my to appease my parents because children know when their parents can't take them they do know and I knew that my parents couldn't handle certain things so I just didn't present them 
I, I knew particularly my mother, she just couldn't, she couldn't have handled it. She was, she didn't have the tools. Um, and so I took on the role, and this is what happens to many of us, of almost acting like the protector or the parent of our parent because we can see that they actually can't handle what we could unleash <laughs> if we chose to. Um, and our children really, and, and if you're watching this, probably your children are similar, are bringing this stuff to the fore and we have this opportunity to make a really big shift and yeah. say, no, we're not, this, this generation, we are not, we're not doing that. And then there's this journey of, um, oh, what, how does that, what does that mean about my parents then? What does that mean about my upbringing? Um, and, and that's all stuff that we, we, Lainey and I guide people through when you work with us. But it's big, you know, it's big work to go through kind of going, oh, did my parents do that? to me did my parents control me and manipulate me and coerce me and threaten to you know, because it's not until it's presented to you with by your child often that you remember these feelings right. of being a five-year-old who's been told they can't have dinner or sent to their room or they're not allowed to have the thing that they wanted or whatever and it takes a moment to recognize and practice to recognize that it is your inner five-year-old that is yep. reacting. It's not adult you, right? So listen, um, I don't have very much time here. I'm, I've got a podcast interview in about 15 minutes, but I want to just say something about working with triggers. And I've sat in on a lot of people who talk about triggers and um, lots of, of sort of sessions on working with triggers. And there are really two main uh, parts of unpacking all of this, right? There are the tools that you use for coping and strategies for dealing with identifying that you are triggered and relational tools in the moment. There's that. And that's where most of the people that talk about teach, uh, facilitate workshops on triggers, focus. Sarah and I talk about those things and we present those tools so you're equipped and armed and you've got your tool belt on, but we take it one step further. It's about accountability of who you are and how you're functioning and how you're seeing the world, unpacking that, pulling it apart, looking at all those pieces and reprogramming some of those core beliefs within inside, inside of you. Because you can use tools all you want and you're like managing the wound. You're put you're putting new dressing on top of the wound every time. And those coping mechanisms and tools and strategies are gold and you should have them. You should have them. But let's not stop there. Let's do the deep work and be accountable for the us that we bring into the relationship of parenting. And what we're trying to do, as Sarah said, is really facilitate changing these generational patterns that have been hundreds of years of, of, of wounds that we are stopping right now and we are healing with you. So if you want to heal this stuff, and really enhance the connection in your parenting. Sign up for our course, dang it. <laughs> our course is happening, gosh, pretty soon, right? Oh my so, gosh, <laughs> I just looked at the date. I know, we haven't been talking about it. We've both been really focused on other things. And I really want to stress that what we do is so important for healing the world right now, healing it one family at a time. And you are an important part of this whole process. So if you're finding that the triggers are, are really like, you know, you're getting triggered in parenting, you don't know how to deal with these things, we can help you with that. But let's help you really look under the hood and and get down to the nitty gritty and, and you know, how many more analogies could I put? Oh, roll up your sleeves. <laughs> any, any other ones you could add? <laughs> You've got them. You've got them. Yeah, I mean, this is really about, this is a completely different um, paradigm. So, um, and, and lots of people, I find this often, um, aren't ready for it yet, don't know what we're talking about. That's cool. 
um, because we are talking about something that's really radically different in terms of how you relate with your children. And Lady and I call that partnering, partnership parenting, partnering with our child. And it's really all about challenging the idea um, that the adult's in charge of everything and knows best and the child must bow to the parent's authority. Um, and that is really challenging for people because it cuts to the, the heart of everything that we've been told about what it means to be a parent and it's hard to get your head around it maybe because when you graduate to parenthood, you believe that finally it's my turn to be in charge of something. And it's really fucking annoying when you realise you're not in charge and you're never going to get your turn, I have to tell you. And you've got to be ready for that um, because it is not, it is not easy, uh, it's not easy work. But, but we are talking about um, work that will give you access to this like, um, like next level of understanding of like ev everything, humankind, how the world works. Um, and, and you have, I mean, I think you have to go through hard stuff to open up to what, what else is like the next dimension, right? It's multidimensional. That's what we're talking about. And it's a catalyst for healing, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, am I can't see any questions. Something's wrong with my phone. I don't know if anyone's watching or wants to ask uh, anything. <laughs> I can't I can't see anything. <laughs> Melissa says, hey ladies, you both are so awesome. Love you both. Uh, Amanda <laughs> says that may have come off as easier said than done. I know all of it is easier said than done. I guess the reframing of the language in my mind allows me to take a breath and see them as not doing yes. something too yes. much. It's an ongoing yes. practice of awareness and healing. And absolutely, we are talking about yep. th these are perfectly sensible coping skills in the moment. But yep. um, the invitation that Sarah and I provide is to go deeper, to really get to the heart of this. So the triggers are no longer the the core um, re relational um, element that you are experiencing when you engage with your children. So anyway. That's that, guys. I gotta run. Um, okay. I just thank you. We'll put a um. You you'll put a link up underneath. It's to register. There. Excellent. And of course, you can message us if you've got any questions. You want to know exactly what we do in this five week program. Um, please do uh, feel free to touch base with either one of us. Yes. Indeed. Cool. All See right. you soon. Bye. <laughs>